Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to add a bold sky overlay to a photo and then edit the colors of the photo to make it match the sky. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do here is just go ahead and add our sky overlay. So I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded. Now mine says Place Embedded because I'm working in Photoshop CC. If you're in an earlier version of Photoshop, it might just say Place. It's completely fine. It's the same thing. Go ahead and click that, and it'll allow you to navigate to where you have your sky overlays saved. Uh, now I'm going to be using the cinematic skies for this edit, and I'm going to use one of the sunset skies, number 41. So I'm just going to click the sky that I want and then hit Place. This will pull the sky right up onto your photo. It sometimes takes just a minute. Okay, now once it's popped up, you can see the bounding box, which allows you to adjust the sky as needed to fit your photo. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to drag the bottom up. Um, so I drag the bottom up, and I just want to make sure that I pull it down just a little bit below those mountains back there so I have some blending room. And then I'm going to hit the check mark or hit enter on my keyboard to accept the changes. Um, so the first thing that I do after applying a sky overlay is I change it over here in the layers panel from normal to multiply blend mode. And this allows it to begin to blend with your photo. Um, now, once it's in multiply blend mode, you can grab your move tool and you can adjust the sky as needed. If you need to drag it up a little higher so more of the sky effect shows, um, you're welcome to do that. If you decide that you don't like the changes that you made, you can hit control or command T on your keyboard to bring that bounding box up again and allow you to stretch it to fit um, however you like. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer mask to this layer. And I'm gonna do that by hitting the rectangular button with a circle inside at the bottom of my layers panel. Um, a white layer mask, if you aren't familiar, means that that effect, which on this layer, our effect is a sky, um, a white layer mask means that that effect is showing everywhere that you've applied it. So in this case, our full sky is showing. Um, in order to remove the sky along the edge here, which is what we wanna do, we're gonna paint with black to remove it. So I'm gonna grab a black brush here, and I'm going to change my opacity to 30% by hitting the three on my keyboard. Um, now you can do this at whatever opacity you like. I like to start with a low opacity so that it's a more gradual uh, and subtle blend. And so I'm gonna do this with multiple clicks here. If you just swipe over it at 30% opacity, it's just gonna fade it a little bit, but it's not gonna completely remove that hard edge. Um, so I'm just gonna do this in a few sweeps and just make sure I completely get rid of that line there. And you can make your brush smaller or larger as you go, uh, depending on the area you're working on. And I did that just by hitting the left bracket key on my keyboard. Um, on my keyboard, those the bracket keys are right next to the letter P. Okay, so I'm just gonna sweep this over again in multiple clicks. And you can remove as much as, or as little of this as you want. Sometimes I like to not fully remove the sky from certain parts of the photo because I like the way um, the colors of the sky sort of affect that area of my photo. I find that it looks pretty believable as the you know, colors of the sky normally would affect the colors in your photo. Um, so it's, I mean, but it's definitely up to you. If you want to completely remove it, you're more than welcome. Um, okay, so now that we've done this side of the photo, it's going to get a little bit trickier over here on this side because the sky overlay is so much darker. Um, but as we go ahead and we edit our photo, we're going to darken up the foreground of the photo to match. So um, don't really worry about it yet. Just sort of fade it a little bit and then we can tweak it as we go. That's the great thing about using layer masks too is you can always come back to this layer later and adjust this as needed. So here you can make your brush a little bigger if you wanna remove that line a little more subtly. Um, you can also make it even larger here and just fade the sky in general right there. And that's a little too strong for me. So I'm gonna hit Alt, Control, Z. Um, if you're on a Mac, it would be Option, Command, Z. And that undoes those changes. Um, and then you can lower your opacity to maybe around 10% and then make your brush larger and sort of fade that there. But again, we're gonna darken the this area of the photo. So I'm gonna leave this for now and if we need to tweak this area later, we can. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the darkening. Uh, to do this, I'm gonna do this in multiple steps. Um, but the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new blank layer using that little icon that looks kind of like a sheet of paper. I'm just gonna click that and I'm gonna change the blend mode of this layer from normal to soft light. And soft light blend mode will allow you to paint with um, any different color and it sort of uh, changes the way that it reacts with your photo. On this layer, I'm only gonna be painting with white or black. Um, and then black will darken the photo in soft light blend mode and white will lighten the photo in soft light blend mode. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just hit enter. The soft light section is highlighted in blue. So I'm just gonna hit enter to make sure that it accepts that change. And then I'm gonna adjust my opacity to 20% here by hitting the two on my keyboard. 
and then make my brush a little bit smaller again with that left bracket key and I'm just going to darken the mountains back here and as you can see it's already started blending with that sky overlay just a little bit better um, and as we go if we find that we need to adjust that a little more we can okay so I'm gonna make my brush a little larger here and sweep this over the edge basically my thought process with this is I want to sort of draw the viewers eye right to my subjects in this photo and so by darkening the edges of the photo it kind of pulls those edges out of focus a little bit and sort of brings you right into the subjects um, and what I want to do here is just sort of make this darkness wrap around them a little bit um, since the sky overlay looks like the light is coming from behind them I want to make sure that I do darken the front of them just a little bit to make that believable so again just adjusting my brush size as I go around with this um, and you can also, I, I'm making my brush a little bigger and sweeping the darkness sort of all over these sections. But if you wanted to, you can also make this brush smaller and use it to accentuate the texture in your photo, like in the mountains or the flowers or whatever your surroundings may look like. You can go over certain parts a little more than others. And if you turn this on and off, you can see that you've sort of added some texture there to certain parts of your photo. So you can go as far with this as you'd like. And I'm just going to make my brush a little larger and sweep it over again. Okay, so now I am going to go over the front of my subjects here, just paint a little darkness onto them. Um, since that light looks like it's coming from behind them, it would make sense that the front of them is a little more in shadow. And of course, that would depend on what kind of lighting you have or a, f a reflector or whatever. Um, but in this case, I sort of want the darkness to wrap around them a little here. Um, Okay, so before I move on, I do want to let you know, you can paint this layer over the sky too. Um, so if your sky isn't quite as dark as mine is here, um, I really want to bring the, the darkness onto this lighter foreground to make it match the sky. Um, but you could, you know, if your sky and your photo sort of matched a little as it was, you can paint darkness over both of them to sort of accentuate. Um, and just like I went over smaller sections in the mountains here, you can do that over texture in the clouds, um, depending on the type of sky you're adding. Um, so I'm just going to do one more sweep over the mountains here and I'm going to go ahead and flip my color to white really quickly and I'm going to lighten the tops of those mountains just a little bit. So I darkened below and I'm going to brighten up top and I'm going to lower my opacity to 10% to go over one more time and just bring it up a little. So I feel like that looks much better. You could even do this little mountain here if you needed to and you can turn your layer on and off at any time to see your changes so I think that that looks much better actually and you can turn the sky layer on and off to see what you've done there um, so I think that looks pretty good so to move on what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with um, a levels layer so I'm gonna hit the circle button at the bottom of my layers panel and hit levels and so with this um, the last adjustment that I made I did darken the photo using that if you prefer levels or curves or something like that, you can skip that last layer and you can use levels to darken. Um, so in levels, if you're not familiar, this is the shadow slider, this is the mid-tone slider, and this is the highlight slider. So as you drag these layers, or sorry, these sliders, you'll adjust different parts of the photo or different tones of the photo. Um, so here, if I wanted to darken using levels, I'd make sure that I was in the RGB channel, as that allows you to adjust the darkness or lightness of your uh, photo. And then I would just drag the mid-tone slider down a little bit and if you want to increase the contrast at all, you can drag the highlight slider up just a little bit to brighten those highlights, uh, which adds just a little bit of contrast. And so now what I'm going to do on this layer is I'm going to do the opposite of what we did with the sky. On the sky layer, we left the layer mask white and just removed it using black. In this adjustment, I'm going to make the layer mask completely black by hitting Control or Command I on my keyboard. And this will keep those changes there. It's still locked into this layer. You just can't see them on your photo. So if you turn this on and off, you'll see no changes to your photo because the effect has just been hidden. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip my color to white, and this time we're gonna paint this effect on where we want it. So this allows you to be really selective. If you don't want to add contrast to certain parts of your photo, you don't have to paint it there. And so this gives you a little more control. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna paint this contrast and darkness sort of over this light area of the sky here and then you can just sweep this around a few more sections of the photo if you like where you're applying it I'm sorry I'm gonna hit uh, the two key on my keyboard to increase my opacity here okay, just sweep this over in a few clicks and then again wherever you want to apply this contrast or this darkness you can sweep over a little more 
I'm gonna try to keep it off of my subjects for now because I'm gonna adjust the color of them in a minute. I don't want it to be too strong. I wanna make sure everything looks natural. And um, as you go, feel free to turn the, um, the visibility of that layer on and off so you can kind of see what you're doing. Um, so this layer is darkening a little bit, but it's also sort of popping that color and giving a little bit of contrast to those areas. Um, I'm gonna do just a little bit over her hair so it increases the light in her hair. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adjusting the color. And I'm gonna use a levels layer for that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this levels layer um, and I can call it contrast. You can call yours whatever helps you keep track of them. And then I'm gonna hit that circle button at the bottom of my layers panel again and choose levels. And this time, instead of working in the RGB channel, which adjusts the light and shadow, I'm gonna change this to the red channel. I wanna add a little bit of redness to the highlights to sort of make it have some sunset tone to it. So I'm just gonna drag the highlight slider slightly to the left to add red. Now, since this is the red channel, this top white slider will add red when you drag it over. If you wanted to remove red, you can drag this bottom slider here and this will add the opposite color, which is cyan. Okay, so I'm not going to add cyan this time. I'm gonna add some red. So I'm gonna drag this over a little bit and you can drag it over just until you like it. No magic number, whatever you think looks good. And then to um, adjust the color a little bit more, I'm gonna change red to blue. Um, now in the blue channel, this top right slider will add blue to the highlights. Um, but in this case, I actually wanna do the opposite. I want to add yellow to the highlights. So I'm gonna drag that bottom slider slightly over um, to add yellow until I like the effect. And then um, I think right about there looks pretty good. And so again, what I'm gonna do with this layer mask is I'm gonna invert it by hitting Control I on my keyboard, and then I can paint this on. And again, if you're on Mac, you'll be using Command I to add that in. Um, so I'm just gonna start sweeping this color on with the white brush. So I'm gonna sweep it over my subjects here, and then I'm gonna add some color to that light area. I really want it to look like that light is coming from behind them. Um, so what I wanna do here is be careful not to paint this warmth over on this side of my photo. I sorta of want it to look like that area is in that you know, shadow from the blue tones in the sky. Um, and then the warm light is just coming from this side of the mountains and just um, sort of touching on my subjects, if that makes any sense. Um, so again, I'm just gonna sweep this on where I want it and it is, sorry, uh, you can come back to this layer later. So if you've added some here and then you wanna move on, you can. And then if you decide later you need some more warmth in certain parts of your photo, um, like maybe you wanna paint some more on the tops of these mountains over here, you can come back later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this layer warmth so you can come back to it if you need to. Um, and then what I'm gonna do next is add another la levels layer. And this time I'm gonna add a little bit of a cool tone so I can accentuate the blue in those mountains here. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch from RGB to the blue channel. And this time I am gonna bring up that top right slider um, just to add some blue to the highlights in those sections. Um, and so I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna paint this on. So if you go a little too far with the blue here, you still have full control over how much you paint onto the photo. Um, so in order to paint it on, I am gonna invert that layer mask again by Control or Command I. And then with a white brush, just paint this color onto the mountains here. And I'm just gonna take care to paint at the bottom of these mountains because I do want the warmth to appear on the top of those mountains, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just gonna paint this blue tone at the bottom. And then on this side, I'm gonna paint it all over these mountains. And I'm even gonna pull this blue color down here into the foreground a little bit. Okay, so. Um, once you do this a little more, you can kind of assess where you are so far in your photo. You can turn these layers on and off and kind of see what progress you've made so far. Um, what I wanna do here is just go back to my soft light layer and just paint a little more darkness here at the, at the foreground. I wanna bring that down just a little bit. And then same thing over here. I'm gonna darken this area just a little bit more than I did before. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back up and click my top layer. And what I wanna do in this next step is add some light, like a light effect. Um, so if this light really were creeping over these mountains, there would be a little bit of haziness from the light, maybe some color showing. Um, so I wanna do that here. And I'm gonna do this in two different layers. Um, so the first one is just gonna um, add that, that sheet of paper icon at the bottom of my layers panel, which will create a new layer. And in this one, I'm gonna change it to overlay blend mode. 
And then with my brush tool selected, I'm gonna Alt or Option click right on the sky to select that lighter yellow color from the sky. Um, and holding down Alt or Option will allow your brush to pull up the eyedropper tool. If you want to, you can just click the eyedropper tool, select the color, and then switch back to your brush tool. I just find holding down Alt is just a little bit easier. Um, so at 20% opacity here, I'm gonna sweep this yellow color over the sky, or sorry, over the mountains here to add that light effect there. And you can honestly paint this wherever you want it. If you wanted to paint some more over her hair, you can. I'm gonna leave it as it is um, and just paint that little bit in that I did. And then I'm gonna duplicate this layer by dragging it down over that sheet of paper icon and it'll create a second copy of that layer. So you'll notice that the effect kind of doubles itself right there. Um, in this, this next step, I wanna change this second copied layer to hard light blend mode. So the first one, overlay blend mode, sort of adds that contrast and light. Um, and the second one, this hard light blend mode, adds some haze. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take both of these layers, I'm gonna Control or Command, click them both, and then hit Control or Command G to put them in a group. And this way I can adjust them both as a whole. So you can turn those on and off. Both layers are inside this group, so I can adjust the opacity of them both at the same time. And so you can pull the opacity down here, or if you did want to work them individually, you can just open the group up. Maybe it's got a little too much haze, you can turn the haze down here and just leave the contrast at 100% opacity. So it's up to you. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and Alt, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Alt click the visibility layer on this background, You'll, the eyeball, sorry. <laughs> The eyeball icon on the background layer, I'm going to alt click that and it'll turn off all of my other layers so you can see your before and after. Um, and then you can kind of see what your progress looks like so far and if you need to make any other changes. Um, so I think this looks pretty good. This is probably where I would stop. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can send me an email at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash photography. And if this is the first video tutorial of mine that you're watching, you can find more at morganburks.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.